Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm at the Church of St. Gabriel the Archangel in South St. Louis. With me today is Mary Beth Witchery. Mary Beth, thank you for uh, letting me come in today and look at this instrument. Tell me about this organ. Thank you, Brent. I'm happy to be here. This organ uh, was built in 1961 by the St. Louis Pipe Organ Company, okay. which came from the Kilgan family, mm. was developed from the Kilgan family. And uh, it was a modest two manual instrument with a different console, oh, obviously. Okay. Originally two manuals. Originally okay. two manuals. Then in 1991, this beautiful console was added, and with all the memory and channels and um, lots of really nice features. And was, was it originally in just these two chambers? Yes, it two was. Okay, so they managed to make it a three manual mm -hmm. within it, it, At that point in time, according to the tag here on the organ, the little dedication uh -huh. says 27 ranks. Okay. So it was rebuilt in 1991. Right. And um, the choir is basically just things that are taken from the grate. Oh, I see. So they it's just, just duplicated. The mm -hmm. I see. There's so, nothing in the choir that's original. I mean, it's, it's all appears on it the grate. It's just somewhere. Oh, I see. So mm -hmm. everything's borrowed. All right. And it's, we're saying that the Wicks Organ Company of Highland, Illinois, did the rebuild and built this console. Yes, they so did. It's mm -hmm. all new Wicks chests in there. Sure. So in new Wicks. And John actually. Walsh was the organist at that John time. Walsh. Okay, very good. Well, um, so since then, there's been a little bit of voicing work done. I know some things yeah, have been Yeah, about four up. years ago, um, Eckhard Fell, um, who is from Germany, came and took the organ completely apart, took all the pipes out cleaned and repaired them and revoiced the entire organ. Yeah, so it's got like a completely new A voice, completely new, new instrument. And we added a mixer too. Oh, okay. And it was very interesting okay. because he changed the color of many of the stops. Um, he changed the string into a small principal for the swell and changed all the voicing on the... He started with the principles, which is very fascinating. But he started with the eight-foot principal on the grate. And then from that, he voiced the other principles. Going up from there. Well, I'd like to hear some of his work. So sure. let, let's start with that great eight foot principle and let me hear a little bit of that. beautiful sound it just fills the room yeah. up with that it's, it's, it's a very singing principle yeah, very it's clear but in, and, and mm -hmm. not 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 screamy at all but very clear mm -hmm. so then from there we add the four foot octave mm -hmm. and then we have a two foot fifteenth lovely sound and all of that's capped by a mixture now you said this was new but it's actually there was a mixture there before the heat just re uh, oh yeah they took the bold and mixture out so completely they just, new they mixture. changed it to a different just three ring it. mixture it was I, really I never bright. actually used the other mixture I see so this one is more useful I think yes all right, it's, let's hear it's lovely big bold chorus there that does add a lot of brightness but it's not overwhelmingly loud either no it's um, especially lovely in the room well and you could i'm sure accompany a full room full of singers with just those uh six ranks there you've got pull. <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus some pedal yeah, but i do so we also have two uh mutations that are in the in the grate that are oh, that belong to the grate they're not shared with the crier right. so we have yeah. a two and two thirds twelfth so let me hear eight four two and two thirds just on the grate a little bit okay as a solo as well. Oh, yeah, just solo by itself as a... It's got a really nice sound. Yeah, it adds that extra clarity to sing out above mm -hmm. it. And then, just for curiosity, we also have, add the two foot to it. And then we go up to a one and one third. So we almost have uh, part of a mixture there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll correct. Right Yeah, if you had a smaller crowd, you don't need the mm -hmm. mixture really capping it off. Yeah, that's um. actually, you know what, I've used this combination, but I have not. Well, sometimes I have added yeah, this one to one it, third, but, yeah. but that's It's interesting that you have that independent one and one third sure. in the grade. Sure, sure. And then we have some other stops, but they're all borrowed from the choir. We have Flauta Traverso, Gemshorn, Spitz Flute. Yeah, they're all Two-foot flute back and one and, one, one, one and three-fifths. But let's, so let's go over to the choir, and let's hear how those stand alone. Starting with, um, we have an eight-foot Gemshorn. 
mm -hmm. um, acquired. Let me hear how this is a, how the string works. Very lovely. It's it's not real edgy. It's kind of a broad scaled, almost mm -hmm. almost principal type of, of sound there, but much softer than the great principal. Um, I would even call it a dulciana based on that. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's it's lovely. And then we have a eight foot flauto traverso. Mm -hmm. uh, this is on the choir. This is on, this is also available on the great. Um, let's hear that. It's very nice. It's got a lot of uh, really bright harmonic edge to it, a lot of chiff there to it, so mm -hmm. it's nice. And then that also has a four-foot flute. Let's hear that spitz flute by itself. It's very narrow scale, has mm -hmm. a lot of edge to it, a lot of brightness. So I imagine if you add that to the eight foot, you get quite a, a bright. Yeah, you know, I actually oftentimes use these three together. The gamson and the flutes. Because it's. Um, Let's hear the flutes by themselves. Yes. Pretty bright. It doesn't have a mm -hmm. lot of depth to it. So if you add the gamson horn, I guess that gives you more fundamental sound. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pull stops here and just keep building up that, sure. that choir uh, ensemble. So here's with the two and two thirds, the block flute it's called. Um, that's a favorite for me um, as a solo I was going to say, gonna say that's probably a good solo. Mm -hmm. Let's hear mm -hmm. just that by itself. Bright and it cuts through, and I guess if you want to make it even brighter, you can add the two foot mm -hmm. flute abec. And then we have yet another one and one third. This one is a flute scale. That's a little miniature ensemble there to, to counter the great. Mm -hmm. um, and then to complete the, the cornet, we have a tierce in there. I'm going to go back to just, let's play eight, four, and one and three fifths. I'll play that as a solo. Okay, style. sure. So, right, and then again to complete the cornet, we can bring in the two and two thirds. Mm. It's nice and bright. Good bright cutting edge, but it's not, again, it's not overly loud. It's not a big uh, presence in there. Um, and then we uh, skipped over in the great, the one big reed that's up there in the choir, and that's our herald trumpet. Uh, now, I do believe this was actually added in 91, if I Correct. got the, Correct. the news on that. So uh, this is our the biggest reed in the organ, so let's, let's hear a little bit how that it's, sounds. Yeah, and it's really nice because since it's on the choir, in the choir and under expression, mm can be used as an ensemble stop as well as a solo oh, stop. Oh, okay, because you can, because it's in the grade, it's available there, but it's actually in the choir box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big bright yeah, big trumpet bright. there, but not, again, not piercing loud, so mm -hmm. I could see, yeah, if you could close that down and have a small trumpet, mm -hmm. that'd be really useful. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go over now to the other side. All of that's in this one chamber here on this side of the church. The swell and, and more the pedal are over here on this side. So what do we have in the swell? Tell me about those stops. Well, we have another lovely principal. Mm -hmm. Geigen principal, it's called. Mm -hmm. this, well, this and this was a string. Eckhart revoiced it to make it really? lighter scaled, so now it's the lovely principal. So it's actually been, okay, let's hear that. I 
lovely. So it's, it's mm-hmm. got a big, broad sound, but it's, it sounds like a principal. He did a really good job of, of changing that string. It was very fascinating as he voiced the organ because you get to see how he was thinking. Yeah. And starting with the principal yeah. eight, and then I think I think he it. worked with all the principals Probably. Yeah. together. It's a good way to start. To make them to play nice with each other. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, and then we do also have another, an actual string in there, an Ertzailer. Oh, yeah. And then it has its matching Celeste. a thinner, stringier sound, mm-hmm. uh, and again, all of that can be closed down in the It's a little there. soft. It would be really ideal to have a little bigger string. A bigger string. Well, that's probably where the, the other string was, and then it's, it's right, right. repurposed into a more useful spot. But um, again, that's, that's not super soft with the box open. I imagine when you close it down, it's quite soft. Sure. So then we have a flute, an eight-foot flute that goes down to 16, uh, and it's mm-hmm. called a Rohrflute, or Rohrgedeckt is a 16. Um, let's hear some of that. Sound there, mm-hmm. very full and, and, and dark flute. I should sound use there, that. So. Play it at Knuffle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Well, then you can use the eight foot as your. As long as I don't run out of keys, I'm okay. <laughs> and then that's that plays at sixteen and eight. Uh, and then we have a four foot flute a few so that goes on top of the eight foot. Oh, that's a fun, the, that's a very fun little flute. Let's hear this. chipper bright flute mm-hmm. there. I like that. How does it I sound? like this flute a lot. Yeah, I can see why. How does it sound with the eight foot uh, underneath it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. nice clear sound. Uh, and then we have one more. We have a two foot knocked horn. It can mm-hmm. go on top of that. It's um, a very nice flute as well. Play it by itself. Now, how does our eight, four, and two-foot flutes all sound together there? It's quite the ensemble, and just to hear all of the uh, the swell together on the swell flues. Let's turn on the principal. Um, okay. and Do you want the yeah, 16? Let's turn the 16 on and just play that same thing again or something similar. Okay. I don't want to hear that. sound and then we still have some reeds there that we can brighten it up with um so we start with an oboe now this oboe has a story i'm told <laughs> yeah a very interesting story so the from low c to the g which would be the top pedal note mm-hmm. is gone oh. i think someone took it for a pedal rank somewhere <laughs> well they probably didn't take it out of here because it never had that, those notes here. Well, I'm not saying from here, but right. it was divided up. Well, I'm told that it was actually a Kilgan stop that came out of Graham Chapel, which is the organ on the campus of Washington University. Oh. That pipe was removed, that rank was removed, and somebody, yeah, probably grabbed those bottom 32 notes. So it starts at tenor G sharp. That's, yes, is that a challenge to ever have what you're using it as a it's, solo? It's amazing how many pieces of music and where I need that G. Just the <laughs> so G. Just the G. <laughs> Be, for the solo oboe. Challenging. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's too bad they couldn't find 32 pipes to replace yeah. that when it was built. But yeah. let's That's hear, a, on my wish list. Let's hear the, uh, the part of it that you do have. It's a lovely yeah. sound. Very colorful and, mm-hmm. and, and bright there. I often add this to warm it up a little bit too, sometimes even the principal. Okay. Let's hear that. Let's hear those three together. It's 
still very bright and colorful and mm -hmm. it stands out. Yeah, so. it is. And then we have, uh, just next to that, a Vox Humana. It's very nice. It's it's bigger than I thought it would, would mm -hmm, be in there. Mm -hmm. So you can almost use that as a solo. Mm -hmm. stop yeah, it's, it's, colorful little yeah, it's really lovely. In fact, I don't use it often enough, so thank you. For what, what, <laughs> and I guess we have to hear it with the tremolo to okay. see how. Again, it doesn't make it too uh, <laughs> crazy there. It's still a useful little, no. little color stop. I like that. And then we have our second biggest read, the trumpet. Well, it's a nice a warm sound there. It it's, mm -hmm. uh, cuts through really clearly, but it's... it's yeah, nice it's, this is a very handy stop when I don't want the festival trumpet. Um, I use that. both of them a lot. Okay. I mean, yeah, they have similar qualities, although mm -hmm. this one's not quite as loud. Um, but and yeah. it's a pretty bright chorus read. When I use it as a chorus read, unless I want it really big, um, I keep the box closed. Oh, okay. Let's hear the entire swell there, then. Everything together. Um. Sound. Now close the box down and play that again. Mm -hmm. It gives you a lot of contrast there. It's, it's mm -hmm. nice to have that all. Yeah, this, the the boxes weren't working properly. Now there's a oh. big difference. Good, you got those worked out. All right. Well, then we have a few stops in the pedal. Um, most of the pedal is borrowed from elsewhere. Um, but uh, we do have a couple of swell, independent stops. Swell and the well, swell and the great ultimately. Yeah. Okay. So we but it the, says choir, but that's really from the great. Right. Right. So, um, but we do have a 16 foot violon that's independent. Mm -hmm. So let's hear some of that. And that's in the back of the, the great chamber. I can see it back there. So nice, tall, really bright, edgy, mm -hmm. uh, 16 foot. And yeah, it's then, a nice. It's a nice stop. From there, we borrow the 16 from the swell, so we have the roar get mm -hmm, Correct. Room. And then... Um, we, this is from the grave. We don't have an independent 8-foot. Oh, we do have a harmonic flute, that's right. Harmonic flute, There's yeah. an independent harmonic flute in the pedal. It's a very nice sound. It's, mm -hmm. it's good it is. It it's very, is. very different from the violon. You have right. a brighter edge right. and right. that darker 8-foot. Uh, and then we do have an independent choral bass at 4-foot. Yeah, that's a handy stop to have, too. And there's also a four-foot gadet. Now, did we talk about this being borrowed from something else, or is it actually independent? Yeah, and that's actually an independent four-foot gadet. So you do have an independent 16, 8, and 4, two fours in there, uh, in, a, in addition to all the borrowed things. And then we do have a, it's a mixture, but it's it's wired. It's, it's made from other things, correct? correct? So, correct. And okay. everything else here is borrowed. Yeah, we have all of our reeds. Now, the swell trumpet does go down to 16 foot here. Um, it didn't Correct. do that on the manual. Yeah. What does the bottom of this sound like? Just for the bottom. Play an octave. Yeah, okay. just that lower. Octave. I'm going to close the box. It's okay. pretty loud. It's nice, bright. Mm -hmm. uh, continues on down. It gets a little brighter as it goes down. I think from the yeah, foot, it's. So. Um, when the box is open, it's very bright. Very, very, <laughs> very bright. <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess the next thing is I'd like to hear all of okay. it together. You've got uh, the combination action has actually been updated even since 1991, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I remember seeing it a long time ago. So you've got the uh, Peterson the ICS 4000, which has hundreds of memory levels, yeah. pistons everywhere, super um, handy. And then you actually have camera buttons wired in. That's for this. Correct. screen that allows Although you to, now we only have one view. Oh, we only have one view. It doesn't actually yeah. have four cameras anymore. Well, it's they, handy when you've got them wired back in. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I've gotten used to one view. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to hear what you can do with it. Okay.
You start our tour of the organ by going in on the swell side. We have to go up from the floor. And once we're in there, there's two main chests. Against the back wall, we see the 16-foot trumpet. Some of the 8-foot offsets are against the wall on different chests. There's a look at the 16-foot offset chest. The chest closest to the front has the roar flute and the copper flute. Then the other chest here has the Voximana, the oboe, and the eight foot flute. There's a little flyby of the Voximana. And directly behind that is the oboe, starting at tenor G sharp. You can see the curved caps on top of the pipes. Here's a look at the other chest again with the 8 foot roar flute and 4 foot flute. When we come up on the grate, we see the mixture right in front of us. There's a, one main chest for the grate, and everything's on that. Here we are up on the walk board, looking at all the principal chorus pipes. Right here at the front of the chamber, speaking into the room. And here it is from the other side. And you can see the pedal pipes over against the wall. It's the four foot coral bass and 16 foot violone, which has been mitered to fit under the ceiling in here. And then there's the choir box right next to those. And if you look, now we're looking inside the choir box. There's all of those pipes. The main chest is on the floor. There's offsets on the back. And then the hooded tuba is up here on a chest in the air. There's also some of the eight foot flute pipes on that chest as well. And in order to get to these to tune them, there's a walk board over the pipes on the floor that allows you to stand up and reach the top of these pipes. So this organ was, you know, rebuilt by Wicks in 91. Wicks generally uses Sitka spruce for all of the uh, structural parts of the organ. They have forever, it's in their advertising and in their material. Um, but in 1991, apparently they couldn't get enough Sitka spruce. So the next best alternative was mahogany. So here inside the organ in places that people never see is all of this lovely furniture grade mahogany uh, serving as chest legs, as wind chests themselves, walk boards, ladders, wind trunks, uh, it's all mahogany, which is really amazing to see. Uh, it's lovely looking wood, but uh, I imagine it added a bit of cost to the organ for the builder. I don't know if the church absorbed any of that or not, but uh, yeah, mahogany wind chests. Mayor Beth, thank you for showing us this wonderful 1961 St. Louis Pipe Organ, 91 Wicks Organ Company. Um, this instrument's it's been through a lot of changes and it's kind of had to find its way in it. It's, it's, it you've gotten a really successful instrument out of it, thank I can you. tell. It plays nice to leave it itself now. <laughs> um, I would also thank John Walsh, uh, who was the organist here for 20 years. And he was the organist uh, when this when this changes were made to, to a three manual in 91. And I actually bumped into it a couple of weeks ago. Oh. We were having breakfast uh, and getting ready to record The King of Instruments, which is our weekly radio show here on the air in St. Louis. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, and he said not only was he here as an organist when this instrument was rebuilt, but he was a student here at St. Gabriel's in 1961 when the instrument was first coming in. Oh, wow. And he said he remembered seeing pipes come in uh, you know, and was really excited as a kid. And that oh, I'm sure. made him really interested in the organ and then came here to play. So uh, he gave me some information about the instrument and its history, which was very helpful. Well, he certainly... Uh got the music program going here at the parish. Yeah, you definitely did. And you're doing a wonderful job of keeping it going. Thank you. As I said, we were recording the King of Instruments that morning when I saw John. Um, that's our weekly radio show. Uh, was produced by the Oregon Media Foundation and the St. Louis AGO. It's a weekly radio show that's on the air here in St. Louis. And if you're interested in having the King of Instruments on the air where you are, send me an email and we can talk about how we can make that happen. We're anxious to share it with uh, the rest of the outside world. 
Thank you again, Mary Beth. Thank it's wonderful you, listening to you play and show off this organ. Remember, for streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, you can visit our three streaming sites, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the thumbs up button. We'll have more videos coming, so please stay tuned. I'm Brent Johnson. I'll talk to you next time.